and he rose from the dead, literally walked out of a tomb, the firstborn of creation, victorious over Satan, victorious over sin, victorious over the world. And I'm telling you, if you don't believe that, if you believe the nonsense at this church, then your church is worse than going to just some club, a secular club. Your church is teaching Satanism. It's teaching secular humanism. It's teaching a false Christianity. They are false apostles, false teachers, teaching the doctrines of Satan. And your church is a synagogue of Satan. And you're going to suffer the wrath of God. You're going to suffer more than an atheist is because you're taking Christ and you're spitting in his face. And you're denying his resurrection. You're denying his sacrificial death. You're denying the true in God. You're denying the two natures of Christ. You're worse than an atheist. And then they sit in their churches and they have the sodomites come and sing for them. And they sit in the churches and they help organize fundraising for people that are pro-abortion. The blood of those infants is on your hands. And that false doctrine will devour you and you will be cast into the lake of fire where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Beware of false prophets. Their doctrine will devour you. Get out of those churches. Find yourself a church that believes the Bible's, the word of God, fully inerrant, that believes in a literal resurrection, that takes the Bible literally. It's not, it's not a myth. It really is true. And you need to find that church and you need to submit to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and get out of those satanic churches. You know, modernistic churches are also liberal politically. I mean, it's just, it's just amazing how uh, they've really hurt this country. You know, they su support sodomite rights. They support uh, lesbianism. They support abortion on demand or the slitting of innocent throats of infants, of babies. They are also anti-death penalty and pro-socialism. You know, it's amazing. They, it's okay to murder babies that are innocent, but murderers who deserve to die, they don't want to kill them, <laughs> you know. As it says in the Bible, all those who hate me love death. And why are liberal churches always statist and they're liberal politically? It's just a pattern we see throughout the 20th century. Well, Brian, uh, this is uh, very perceptive and, uh, and it certainly is true. The liberal churches tend to be liberal uh, politically. We're talking tonight about Christian modernism. And uh, uh, as Brian stated at the very beginning, it is neither Christian nor particularly modern. But uh, it is simply a rehash of Satan's old lie, uh, hath God said, uh, uh, ye shall not surely die, and uh, questioning the word of God. Why is it that the liberal churches, the modernistic churches, are so often liberal politically? Brian mentioned the word statist. They seem to have a faith in the power of the state to uh, create the perfect society by, uh, by enacting uh, laws that are all embracing, that cover every part of life. Uh, they seem to be, to be dedicated to electing uh, liberal candidates that uh, promise bigger and bigger government, and uh, uh, it is a pattern. And I believe that the reason for this is because as supernaturalists, the political liberals really deny uh, the whole idea of conversion. They deny the, the idea, they know nothing about the new birth. And uh, the Bible says that uh, unless we are born again, we cannot see the kingdom of God. And uh, these people know nothing about the new birth that the Lord Jesus Christ spoke about. They know nothing about uh, what Paul, the truth of what Paul taught in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, where he said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. They don't know anything about that. And so they don't have any sense of, of the idea of remaking society from within. They don't have any sense of the idea of, of grassroots change, changing society from the ground up. And uh, so they, they follow after the political views that envision top-down coercive change, political change in society at the hands of the messianic elite that uh, know better than the common man what people ought to think and believe and do, and they, they have the idea that it, if somehow they can just get the elite into power, they can, they can force their liberal agenda down the throats of conservative Christians, and they're being successful. They've learned how to seek the seats of power. Uh, they've learned how to infiltrate the, the uh, academic campuses, the, 
the uh, uh, seats of higher learning in our country. They've infiltrated the media. And uh, most people in the media are way to the left of uh, the common people here in this country. They have infiltrated the judiciary. They've captured the, uh, uh, the, the uh, judge seats. And uh, that's why oftentimes when, uh, uh, I mean, think of Roe versus Wade, for instance. That never would have been voted into law if it would have been presented as a national referendum back in 1972 or, or 1973. The liberals knew that they, they didn't have a ghost of a chance of getting, of persuading the majority of the American people to vote for death for unborn babies. And so what did they do? They infiltrated the judiciary, and they finally got seven people on the U.S. Supreme Court to impose their will upon the whole nation. Just like they got uh, a single judge down in Arkansas to throw out uh, the Paula Jones lawsuit. Uh, that, that would never have happened if it would have been presented to, uh, uh, to all the voters in the United States. So they've learned how to exercise and wield positions of power. But might does not make right. And just the fact that, that they are able right at the moment to be in the driver's seat politically and get their agenda passed, and even though they've been able to lull the uh, majority of the citizens in the United States to sleep so that we, just as long as the economy is going great, we don't care what kind of a man occupies the office. Uh, he can be a womanizer. He can even be a, a sex offender. And it doesn't matter. The economy is going great. They've been able to, uh, to advance their political agenda because Christians have not been on their knees praying, God, save our nation. The Bible says, righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And right now, the wicked are in control, and the righteous are suffering the, the punishment of it. And it has to do, in large measure, with the liberal churches, which are right in the pocket of the liberal uh, political machinery in this country. And uh, yes, it is true that uh, the liberals are also liberal politically. Uh, Brian, give us a little bit of history here. When did the mainline Protestant denominations become modernist, and how has this affected our nation? Well, it really started uh, back in the, primarily in the 1890s. It goes back farther. Of course, uh, the, the uh, congregational churches, uh, they, they were lost way back uh, in the se late 1700s, early 1800s. Many of those became Unitarian. Uh, but it really started uh, in the 1890s. It picked up speed, and then by the 1930s, uh, most of the mainline denominations became uh, modernist or liberal. It captured uh, all the seminaries first. It captured the mission boards. It captured the colleges. And then as all the new ministers coming into the denomination were trained to be liberal and accepted liberalism, the denominations, many of them even had a policy. For example, the Presbyterian Church in the USA, they would not even hire somebody who went to a conservative seminary like Westminster Seminary. You had to go to one of their liberal seminaries where you were indoctrinated in their satanic nonsense to get one of their churches. And it's, it's really that bad. And it's just had a devastating effect on this nation. We've already mentioned some of the things. Abortion on demand, the idea that people can murder their babies, that that is acceptable today, that is just absolutely shocking. Abortion is murder, and it was seen as murder for, for many, many years. And then the idea that uh, people who uh, have anal sex with each other, sodomites, homosexuals, it's a perversion. It's a disgusting, sick perversion. And the idea that this is acceptable and it's actually considered virtuous nowadays by people uh, is a result of them rejecting biblical ethics. They've rejected the Word of God. They don't have biblical ethics. And uh, our society's going down the tubes. Teenage suicide, drug abuse. You know, it's the generation of the 1960s that really fully rebelled. Those are the sons and daughters of the generation that really abandoned the Word of God and became liberal. It took just one generation to go from a law-abiding uh, society with a very low divorce rate to a society of sexual perversion, of sexual immorality, pornography, homosexuality, uh, women's lib, which is satanic to the core, and uh, abortion on demand, sodomite rights, all these things really sprang forth in the 1960s, expanded in the 70s. They're still with us in the 80s. They're taken for granted now. And uh, here we have a sex pervert in the White House, a guy who is a uh, sociopath who is uh, you know, fondling women, pulling his pants down, and doing all sorts of disgusting behavior. People don't even care because Americans are idolaters. 
they worship money. They worship the pocket, pocketbook. They worship their bank account. They don't give two cents about the word of God. They don't care anything about Jesus Christ. And we've become a nation of idolaters, a nation that worships money. And believe me, God is setting us up for a big fall. God will judge this nation. Over 35 million dead babies are on our doorstep as a nation. And God's not going to let that pass. You better beg for mercy from God. You better really turn to Jesus Christ, submit to him as Lord, and get yourself in a good Bible-believing church because the wrath of God is going to come on this nation. It's, it's really coming, folks, and it could be very soon. And uh, if you're going to worship gold, if you're going to place gold before God and before his Bible and before his ethics, then you're going to suffer because God's going to take your gold away. It's that simple. You know, modernistic churches constantly criticize fundamentalists. And, uh, of course, the media is very biased, and they, they don't show the hypocrisy here. And uh, the Christian right for trying to impose biblical morality on America. Now, why, first of all, is this accusation totally hypocritical? And why is ethical neutrality in the political realm totally impossible? Well, Brian, uh, I don't have much time to speak about this subject, but the, the, very, the fact is that uh, the liberal churches and the in liberals in politics have criticized fundamentalists for... Uh, uh, having the gall to bring out a person's uh, view on abortion or his, uh, his character issue um, it, and bringing that into the political uh, sphere. And uh, they've threatened to take the uh, fundamentalist churches to court for uh, passing out uh, uh, questionnaires or passing out position papers uh, which compare the, uh, the views of the candidates on certain issues. And they're saying, hey, you can't do that. Uh, but at the same time, I could take you past liberal churches right here in the city of Lansing that actually have political uh, signs out on their lawns around uh, election time. And when Jesse Jackson goes and uh, preaches, and I put that in quotes, when he, he preaches his satanic gospel in churches, uh, many people will throng to those churches. And the fact is that the liberal churches are very much active politically. But there is no neutrality. Jesus said, and I'll just give you one verse for this, in Matthew 12 and verse 30, He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. There is no neutrality in politics. There is certainly no neutrality in religion. If you are not with the Lord Jesus Christ, for the Lord Jesus Christ, you're against him, and you're going to go to eternal per per perdition. Brian, recently on PBS, there was a program called uh, From Jesus to Christ. Now, how did this program present a modernistic bias? Oh, I, I just I watched the program, and it was just the show was just so demonic. They had, of course, all these super liberal scholars. Not one conservative scholar. Uh, Harvard Divinity School, Sh Chicago uh, University, of Chicago, um, Princeton. They had all these rank liberals on there who don't believe the Bible at all, and they had they basically assumed that the Bible is not the Word of God. They assumed it's a bunch of myths. They they taught that. The Gospels were written after the destruction of Israel, which is absolutely not true. The, the New Testament canon was completed before the fall of Jerusalem. Uh, they had total liberal assumptions. They, they, they taught that Marcionism and Gnosticism, which are two rank heresies, that those Gospels, like the Gospel of Thomas and these other things, were equal and no different than the other Gospels, that just the other Gospels got accepted and these didn't because of political power. These were a bunch of rank, unbeliever, believing heathens, a bunch of heathen swine, Satanists getting up there, judging the word of God. They didn't offer one bit of evidence for anything they said. They didn't offer any bit of proof. They're just unbelieving Satanists. But I don't have enough time to go on. <laughs> you know, this is a good question for our audience. What do people in these modernist churches need to do to be saved? Well, Brian, an excellent question. This is the most important question that you could ever ask yourself. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? The biblical answer is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If you are in a modernistic church, if you are in a, a church that uh, puts uh, mammon above God, if you're in a church that uh, put, puts political power against God, you need to repent. It says in uh, Acts chapter 17, at the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. And you need to hear the gospel. And uh, we... We urge you to come out and visit our churches, and uh, do tune in again next week.